Yesterday, uh, one of the interns from the visitor center came around and he told us about bluebirds and he brought a, uh, a nesting box and showed us and explained things to us and I thought it was very educational. So, uh, as we... Thirteen forty nine page. Uh, we're going to read Philippians two, uh, one through five. Therefore, if there is is any consolation in Christ, if any comfort of love, if any fellowship of the Spirit, if any affection or mer and mercy, fulfill my joy by being like minded. Think about that. Like minded with Christ. Having the same love, being a, to one accord of one mind. Let nothing be done through selfish ambition or conceit, but in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others better than himself. Let each of you look out not only for his own interests, but also for the interests of others. You know, uh, we think about that song, Others, uh, and when we pray, not to just pray for ourselves, but to pray for others. Let this mind be in you, which was in also in Christ Jesus. So today we're going to talk about uh, looking at the world and looking at people as if, uh, as if we were Jesus, to use his eyes. Uh, Charles Spurgeon, uh, he was a uh, pastor back in the 1800s. Uh, he, he said, he who preaches to broken hearts will never have a one of his own. So you think about that. When I go around uh, on Saturdays and talk to the mm -hmm. campers and we uh, are just one-on-one -on -one talking about personal things in their life uh, or things that are going on in my life, and I always look at the environment around me and see the kayaks and the uh, uh, the campsite to see what their interests are. But uh, you get to know people so intimately or close, uh, whereas if we're in a group like this and we uh, took time uh, to talk, we wouldn't know each the things about people that when you're just one-on-one. -on -one. So... Uh, Everyone has a story. That's what I'm finding out. You know, when when you sit on a bench and, or or uh, over some uh, some eats and you're talking to a family, uh, you find out more about them. Uh, so everybody has a story. Today we're going to look to others through Jesus' eyes. Uh, songwriter uh, Mike Ott put it this way. For if once I could see the world the way you see it, he's talking about Jesus, as he sees the world, he says, I just know I'd serve you more faithfully. So you, you think that would be true for each of us? I mean, I'm talking about individuals that I'm speaking to. Uh, if we could see through Jesus' eyes, if we could have a real meaning for our purpose in life, uh, would we honestly... Uh, be more sincere and faithful in serving Jesus. Would you, uh, you have a song? Uh, do you remember uh, where you were? You listen to the music and the radio and, and you think about songs and you say, boy, I was, it was 1965. Uh, I remember where I was when that song was a hit. So you think about this song. Uh, I'll give you the words. Uh, well, I'll give you the words a little bit later. But uh, this is an interesting song for us, uh, for the child of God. If we could view the world through Jesus' eyes, it would literally change our life. So that's my question today. If we uh, would sincerely be sincere, uh, how many Christians do we actually have here today that really have a desire to have a 
to know Jesus as Savior, have a sincere desire that one day we'd be like Jesus. I don't mean when we get to heaven. I mean here, while we're here on earth and doing some good. No matter if you are born again Christian or an older timer like me, uh, you ought to have a desire deep in your heart to be more like Jesus. I think that's missing today uh, in our society and our world. We think about all the problems that we face, uh, that think about our uh, leaders of our country, uh, all the conflicts that they have to settle. So I'm going to give you some examples. Jesus sees always, uh, he always sees others. We always see ourselves. Jesus always has compassion. Sometimes we just don't care. Jesus sees, uh, his eyes have pity. Our eyes have pity for ourselves, number one. Jesus loves unconditionally, unselfishly. Our love is conditional. Isn't it amazing how much you have to grow to meet somebody and spend time with them before you find out if you're accepted or if you're going to be loved, liked? You know, uh, we look at people and we talk to people and we might share some common things, but our love is un is un uh, it's conditional. We put conditions on our love. Uh, Jesus' eyes love at all times. Our eyes love people sometimes. Jesus' eyes love righteous. We desire sin. Uh, Jesus hates sin. We desire sin. Jesus' eyes love the sinners. Uh, our eyes judge the sinner. Isn't that crazy, huh? We look at somebody and say, Boy, I I'm glad I'm not like him. I, I wouldn't want to live his life. Uh, but when we're going to get on and talk about what Jesus sees when he sees a sinner. Jesus' eyes reach out to people. Our eyes reach in. Jesus' eyes weep over the broken. Our eyes weep over ourselves. Jesus' eyes rejoice with those who are rejoicing and are ha uh, joyful. Our eyes envy people uh, over their happiness. So, if I am like Jesus, I must desire to see through Jesus' eyes. We're so quick to pass judgment and condemn others. Uh, I found that uh, by my going around to the park uh, on Saturdays and talking to people that Everybody has a story. Everybody has a past. Every person that you meet has something about them that you don't know. Uh, it's the more time that I get to spend with people, the more that you have, uh, you find out a little bit more about them. But when we just see some per person for a first time, we don't have, really don't know anything about them, and there's a lot of things that are going on in their life uh, that we don't know about. Uh, like the Margie's mother passing away this week. Uh, for you guys that just came today and, and met Margie, you get to think, wow, why is she so miserable? Why is she so downhearted? Why isn't she uh, excited and happy? See, we don't know what goes on behind the scenes. We don't know what goes on in somebody's life. That is one of the great things I find out visiting the campers on Saturday. Uh, uh, it was funny because uh, I was up in the cabins uh, and uh, uh, a guy said to me, him and his wife were sitting on the porch uh, uh, drinking a cup of coffee and uh, he said to me, he says, uh, uh, would you like prayer? And I thought, wow, how cool is that? Uh, he wants to pray for me whereas my job is to go around and pray for people in their problems. He says one of the things that's going on is uh, that you're out doing the Lord's work and you need encouragement and, and you need some prayer. He prayed for me. You know, uh, the, him and his wife and me, we just joined hands and he prayed for me. He says about empowering me to go around and spread God's word. So, and then we got to talking. Uh, I sat down and we talked about uh, some of the different churches and things that are going on in the different churches. But uh, it inspired me. Uh, I had a rough day yesterday uh, uh, getting around the park and doing what I needed to do. 
and this man prayed for me and I appreciated that one of the things that impresses me about our Savior is how he dealt with people and he dealt with their problems you know all people are sinners so as one uh, uh, young one put it I remember an incident in junior church that's where uh, one of the older uh, people would preach to the children and uh, they were making uh, lumps of clay, lumps of making people out of clay. Did the, anybody ever do that? And one was kind of like a real mess. You know, our artistic abilities and our create construction abilities are all different. You know, and he built one and it was kind of um, deformed and messed up. And then he had another one. You'd think uh, somebody that had a uh, uh, very talented uh, he uh, put some hair on it and put some glasses on it and made it look really nice and then he said to these kids I remember this he said what right does one lump of dirt have to judge another lump of dirt uh, for being a lump of dirt you know I, I thought about that we are just clay you know we're just made of clay all of us are a little different looking. All of us are different shades of color in our, our skin. Uh, but we're all the same. Uh, made it. Uh, what did uh, God say in the beginning? Uh, he he, he made, took that, uh, uh, put that, formed that, uh, and then he breathed life into us. So we're all been made the same. But that touched me. So God knows uh, from our frame. Uh, and he remembers us that we are dust. That's what we have to do. We have to remember that we're all made of clay and uh, our, uh, so think about a baby when you're changing that diaper. Uh, you don't throw the baby out when you throw the diaper out, you know? So you think about it. It's, we need to see uh, as Jesus sees and see what he sees rather than what we're focused on when we see people you know and that that's so easy to do isn't it so what does Jesus see when he sees a sinner does he say thank God I'm not like him or, or uh, no he says uh, he sees a lost man think about it, a lost man we sing that great song uh, I once was lost, but now I'm found. Uh, he sees a lost man with an eternal soul for which he died on Calvary for. So every sinner in this world, Jesus died for. So I, I think that our job or our purpose in life is to go out and preach the word so that these uh, ones that are backslidden or are lost can be found. Uh, the Bible says that all men will be willed to be saved. So Jesus sees the saved man as forgiven because of his own shed blood. So it all comes back to uh, Jesus dying on the cross to be that. Uh, so think about this now. Every person has a story, okay? No matter what your past has been, uh, no matter what your... Uh, circumstances have been and no matter what your heartache has been no matter what your disappointments have been no matter what your sin has been and no matter what you have done in your life we are all here today by God's grace think about that uh, all of us have some uh, horror stories for pasts some of us came from broken homes but every one of us has a story. You know, you think about how we're all here today, and, and, and by God's grace, I, I think that it would be good to get an amen on that one. I mean, all of us are glad that we're here, aren't we? Yeah. So, uh, we're going to uh, see, uh, first of all, have to see what Jesus sees. 
Second, love what God, what Jesus loves. You think about that. What does Jesus love? Uh, Jesus loves all sinners. His love is unconditional. Let's turn to uh, 1 John 4. Some of you quick Bible quizzers, get there first. Tell us what page it's on. 1400. There we go. And did you say 1400? 1400. Now, we're going to look at uh, 1 John uh, chapter 4, verse 10 first. In his love, in this love, not that he, we loved God, but he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sin. In other, he was the substitute or the sacrifice for our sin. Beloved, if God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. Now let's go to verse 19. We loved him because he first loved us. So, while we were still sinners, God loved us. Let's go over to chapter 5, uh, verse 13. These things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God, that you may have eternal life. It's interesting. Uh, you go. Uh, Tim gave a good message uh, on... Uh, evangelizing or witnessing to people and uh, you could go through all those verses and then you ask them the question uh, are you going to heaven and they say well I hope so uh, well I think so a and right in the Bible it says right there in 1st John 5 13 these things I have written to you who believe in the name of the Son of God that you may know that you may know that you have eternal life and that you may continue to believe in the name of the Son of God. So, uh, some people say, I hope so. Uh, I don't know. Uh, isn't, isn't the wind wonderful? <laughs> we need that cold breeze, don't we? But when you're trying to do something, if anyone knows for sure that this... You know, in the Bible, uh, people ask, does anyone really know for sure that they're going to go to heaven? Does anyone really know? So the Bible says that you can know. And we just read uh, 1 John 5.13. So there are a lot of people uh, that don't know, even religious folks who come to uh, a church, go to church every Sunday, and, and some people still aren't sure that they are going to go to heaven. People that have been told the plan of salvation. Do you know you're going to heaven? Uh, I don't, I'm not so sure. And, and then uh, you asked them, uh, uh, you walk them through that. He says, well, once I was a Baptist, I used to be a Baptist or I used to be a Catholic or I used to be uh, a Lutheran, you know? And they say, I used to. Didn't used to be a Christian. Maybe you had stronger faith than you have now, but you didn't used to be a Christian. You either have a, or a saint or you ain't. You know, there's no in between. So the Word of God says these things are written unto you that those who believe on the Son of God that would know that they have eternal life. So we'll go on a couple more of these verses here. Uh, that is why God shows us in Romans uh, 3.10 uh, that we need, a sal uh, we need salvation. Uh, as it is written there, is none righteous, no, not one. That includes me and you. Romans 3.23, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. Uh, we are all sinners. 
and we don't deserve heaven. We deserve death. Romans 5.8 But God commended his love to us that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 6.23 said the wages of sin is death. Uh, Romans 5.8 Christ died for us. It was the ungodly, the unsaved, that Jesus came to save. Romans 6.23, the last part of it says, The wages of sin is death. But, uh, then he said, But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. What is a gift? Think about a gift. It's, uh, you have to receive it. Uh, to get the gift, you have to receive it. You don't have to pay for it. Uh, when you get Jesus, you get all of it. So, think about that. Romans 10, 9, and 10, we, uh, the Bible makes it very clear. If thou shalt confess with thy mouth that Jesus is Lord. It doesn't say that he have to make Jesus Lord of your life. Uh, as your Savior, you, you bet. But as your Lord, that varies from day to day. Uh, one songwriter said, uh, if he is not Lord of everything, everything in your life. If he's not Lord of everything in your life, he's not Lord at all. So, uh, says the only way you can make him Lord is by the Holy Spirit. Think about that. Uh, being born again uh, of the Spirit, uh, that's how you get him to come and live in your life. So... Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever, and you know, this is pretty simple. Uh, how many read the Bible? I, I, I get wondering even if Christians aren't reading their Bible. Romans 10, 13 says, Whosoever, whosoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So God loves sinners. Uh, Paul said to Timothy, Jesus came to save sinners whom I was chief. He was the chief sinner. I mean, he went around and used to per persecute the Christians and persecute the churches. And now he's writing all these great books of the Bible. So first we have to learn uh, to see what Jesus sees. Uh, and then we have to go and, and see what Jesus loves. So uh, there's just so many Bible verses here that... I don't want to so uh, first we learn to see what Jesus sees uh, he sees that he God knows our frame and remembers that we are dust uh, what does God see when he sees a sinner he sees a lost man uh, with an eternal soul for which he died for. He sees a saved man as forgiven because of his shed blood. So remember that, uh, those points. Now we're going to go on to this next one. Uh, you have to love what God loves. Jesus loves all sinners. His love is unconditional. Uh, Jesus loves righteousness. Uh, Hebrews 1 9 says, Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above the fellows. Okay, one more point then we're going to make today. Learn to hate what Jesus hates. You know, think about that. Uh, is it, you ask that question, well, is it okay for Christians to hate? Yes, it is. Uh, the Bible does not tell us not to hate but it teaches us not to be hateful the word of God also teaches us what to hate and what not to hate uh, uh, Psalms 9, 119 104 says uh, th uh, through thy precepts I get understanding therefore I hate every false way lying Boy, how about this? I hate and a lying, but the law 
do I love. That's in Psalms 119 as well. Vain things. I hate vain things. But thy law do I love. Evil. Ye that love the Lord hate evil. Backsliding. God hates it when you're a good Christian and then all of a sudden you fall back. Uh, fall back to the world. Uh, 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 what was that fellow's name that was with Paul Demas? Or he went, loved the world and he stopped doing the ministry and he went back into the world. That, but that that's backsliding, you know, when you fall back into the world. But we are not to hate uh, the Lord or anything he loves. One of the healthiest ways for a Christian to live is to love what the Lord loves and hate what the Lord hates. Empty worship. Uh, he says, I hate, I despise your feast days and I will not smell in your solemn assemblies. That was in Amos. Every child of God ought to be healthy, hate of love, of sin, and not sinners. So it's interesting these points that we went over today. Start with the sin in your own life. I used to get a bit mad at me at my boss. He would tell me all the time. He'd say, uh, worry about your own speck in your own eye before you try to remove the plank, like a two-by-four, out of uh, your friends. Uh, and, and it took uh, many years of working and watching sinners work around me. And I was displeased with the sin. And it bothered me. He says, worry about the only little speck in your own eye before you try to remove the two by four in another person's life. So start with your own sin. Be more concerned about the log in your eye than you about the simple splinter in someone else's eye. And one thing that we have to do is protect our family uh, from sin. Warn others that we need to go and tell other people about sin. How it displeases God, and it, I, I think we're robbed of our blessings. You know, it says count your blessings, name them one by one. If you think why well, you're not getting no blessings, and and you wonder why God isn't blessing you, and you look at other people and they're getting blessed, uh, warn other people in love about the consequences of sin. Conclusion: Whose eyes do you have? Uh, so let, let me tell you a couple of these words to this song uh, looking through his eyes uh, my God let me see the world dear Lord as though I were looking through your eyes a world of men who don't a world of men who don't want you Lord but a world for which you died let me kneel with you in the garden remember in the garden of Gethsemane he's talking about where uh, all that uh, uh, that crucifixion all started in the garden where they uh, arrested him and pa placed uh, the, the crown of thorns on his brow and uh, whipped him. and So it all started in the garden. He says, let me kneel with you in the garden, blur my eyes with tears for a of agony. For if once I could see this world the way you see it, I just know I'd serve you more faithfully. Let me see this world, dear Lord, through your eyes when men mock your holy name, when they beat you and spit on you, Lord. Let me love them as you love them, just the same. Let me stand and high above my petty problems and grieve for men hell-bound eternally. For if once I could see this world the way you see, I just know I'd serve more faithfully. So I hope that uh, this message would just inspire you uh, to be a, a little better uh, Christian and have a hunger to help. We had a lot of tracks here last week. Uh, next, I got uh, four of these DVDs of uh, Tim's sermon uh, where he gave a lot of pointers for you how to witness to people in love methods. Uh, but I have, I have four of them uh, from uh, the last week of July when we, and we touched on that last week a little bit.
So, the last song that we're going to sing is I Am Resolved No Longer to Linger, Charmed by the World's Delight. 389. <laughs> We'll do verses one, two, and three. Now, say it like you're good. You're resolved, no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are nobler, things that are higher, these are going to be within my sight. So, sing it like you mean it. Nine again. <laughs> the last verse, verse 5. We're going to sing it without the music. Ready? I am resolved, and who will go with me? Come, friends, without delay. Taught by the Bible, led by the Spirit. We'll walk the heavenly way. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. Let's close in prayer. Father, we are grateful again for the opportunity to be here. We thank you for each heart and soul that you've touched today. We pray that we truly would see through the eyes of Christ, that we would be united in love, that we'd be willing to share your love with others, that they may know, as your word says, that they have that salvation, that they will be with you when they pass from this life unto the others. Lord, if there's someone here today who doesn't know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior, we do pray, Lord, that this would be the day that recognize their, their need, their, 
their, their sin in their life and that they would repent of it and, and turn toward you. Accept Jesus Christ as their Savior. We pray, Lord, that they would know that uh, you're living in their heart and that they'd be resolved to follow the Savior. Thank you for expressing your love so deeply through the payment of uh, uh, the payment for our sins by Jesus Christ. Lord, bless each one as we go this day. Uh, may uh, each one have safety, enjoy the beauty of your creation, and continue to serve you. In Jesus Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, At least they won't blow on the ground. You can just flip You're back. right though with a binder, huh? Yeah. Yeah. A spiral. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that would uh, alleviate a lot of the problems, huh? There's still some coffee and goodies down here if anyone would like some. Take them. Thank you all for coming. Thank you, sir. Absolutely. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thanks. They just go anywhere. It doesn't matter if they're hymnals or Bibles. They go in any box. <laughs> Didn't bring your wife.